I'm like, bro, what is going on? And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sierra. I like to make travel, beauty, and lifestyle content here on YouTube. As you can already tell from the title, today I'm going to be telling you guys everything you need to know before you go to Dubai. Uh, this is just from my own personal experience. I was able to go to Dubai in September of 2022. I had an amazing time. It was very last minute trip, but I felt so blessed to be able to go. Dubai is really one of those unique cities that's like nothing else. Like you can see the similarities between between Miami and New York but they have this amazingly interesting infrastructure that's just like nothing I've ever seen before. Ten years ago Dubai didn't look anything like it does now and ten years from now it's gonna look completely different so I think whenever you get an opportunity to visit Dubai you should absolutely take it. It's just a really amazing city and I had a wonderful time. The first thing that I want to talk about today is where you want to stay when you visit Dubai. Of course Dubai is bigger than the parts that I'm gonna be talking about but the way I traveled it, I saw it in four different parts. There's the part that's closest to the airport, which is Old Dubai. This is where you'll find the old souks, you'll find the older housing and just very traditional. Then you have downtown area. This is where you'll see a lot of the major highways. You'll see the high rise buildings, the museum, the mall, lots of hotels are in this area. Then you have Jumeirah Beach and the marina, which I'll pair together because they're kind of next to each other. And here you'll find the walk where it's this long pathway full of shops and restaurants to visit. You have the actual Jumeirah Beach, lots of hotels, the Dubai Marina Mall, and a lot of of water activities are located there and then you have the palm which is that beautiful palm shaped neighborhood it's lots of houses you can rent there and just residential homes and Lantis is located out there it's just a beautiful area kind of off to the side of the rest of Dubai so when I visited, I stayed in the marina. I stayed at the Hilton Jumeirah Beach Hotel. I didn't find it to be overly luxurious or underly luxurious. I really rated it as like a simple three-star hotel, very family friendly. It had a pool and it was located steps away from the beach. So it was definitely amazing value as far as location and accessibility to activities and restaurants. If you want to go to Dubai and you just want a simple trip, you don't want to have to move around too much, you don't plan on doing a lot of activities, you want to just spend your time at the beach and eating, I highly recommend in the marina area, everything is kind of nice and compact and you don't have to do too much and you can catch a taxi for less than $10 to explore pretty much the whole area. But if you plan on having a more active time in Dubai, you plan on visiting the mall, you plan on going to the old souks, you plan on going to the beach and doing all those things, I would recommend staying downtown. I found downtown to be the middleman of everything. So it might take you 15 minutes to get to old Dubai and then 15 minutes the other way to go to the marina and things like that. And money wise, if you're gonna be taking taxis everywhere, it's definitely gonna save you a lot of money and a lot of time because you'll just be right in the center of it all. Taxis can add up when you're traveling really far distances. Me and my mom ended up taking a taxi from Jumeirah Beach all the way to old Dubai and that cost about 30 US dollars one way. Getting around Dubai is extremely easy. You can find taxis everywhere. Nine times out of 10, there will be taxis just kind of looping around the area, especially if you're staying in downtown or in the marina. If you do decide to rent a car when you're in Dubai, I found that the experience driving was very simple and easy. I didn't drive myself, but just looking around at everyone, the signs were in English and in Arabic. So if that's a concern, you are good there. You can use Apple Maps. The only thing I will recommend when you are driving in Dubai is you must abide by the traffic laws. I would absolutely say, look up the traffic laws and make sure you're not going against them. One of my drivers had accidentally made an illegal U-turn and he was having like a fit about it. He was like, oh my gosh, how could I do such a thing? And I was just like, it's just a U-turn. Like, but they take that stuff very seriously. Dubai doesn't have a lot of police around where they'll pull you over and things. But what Dubai does have is lots of cameras. 
So you're being recorded at all times and I would hate for you to get a ticket after you've already turned your rental car back in thinking you're done with the payments and they don't give you back your security deposit because you've racked up fines and things from getting tickets from the camera. I did see people going over the speed limit. I saw taxi drivers going over the speed limit. So I don't think that is much of a problem, but of course, within reason, you don't wanna be going, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles over the speed limit in another country. That just seems really crazy. So now that I talked about where you wanna stay and how to get around Dubai, next I wanna talk about what time of year you wanna to go to Dubai, and that is because of the heat. So if you didn't know, Dubai has two seasons. You got hot, and you got hotter. So of course, during the hotter season, that'll be from around May to October. That is considered the off season in Dubai. Things tend to be a little cheaper. You also have Ramadan during this time. So you just wanna keep that in mind if you're traveling during Ramadan. It might be harder to find restaurants that are open during the day. So I went in the hotter season. I went in September and it was extremely hot. I wouldn't say it's unbearable if you take the steps that are necessary to stay cool. So if you wear airy clothing and if you take breaks and if you wear your sunglasses and a hat and you try to be in the shade as much as possible, that certainly helps. It's a lot of ways that you can control how hot you get. But if you're gonna be doing a lot of walking outside, doing a lot of things during the day, I would definitely recommend just going in the hot season, which is from November to April. The only downside to going during the hot season, which is kind of like their winter, is that things tend to be more expensive and it's a lot more people visiting during this time. Also, something that I noticed while we were out there was during the day, since it is so hot, a lot of places don't open until the afternoon and until nighttime, and a lot of places stay open very late, around two or three in the morning. You'll think that the area is dry during the day, but then at nighttime, that's when everybody is outside just because it's so much cooler at night. The weather is really nice at night. It can be around 90 degrees. It just feels like a normal summer at night in Dubai. Also because of the heat, of course, wearing sunscreen and covering up your skin as much as possible is so, so, so important. You wanna have your SPF of 30 or higher and you wanna apply it every two hours. But the one place you do not wanna to forget to apply your SPF, guys, is on your lips. I have got a sunburn on my lips. Never in my life have I gotten a sunburn anywhere. But then I go to Dubai and I got burnt on my lips. When I came back home, I'd say about a week later, my lips had this hard film on them and they were so dark. And my friends would look at my lips and be like, what is like, Sierra, are you okay? Like I looked sickly. I was so scared that my lips would never turn back. I didn't know it was sunburn at the time. I didn't know what happened to me. My lips had recovered, but I just don't feel like they're back to how bright they were before it's a very subtle difference you may not be able to tell but please 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 guys when you're out traveling in the middle east don't forget about your lips and your hands and your feet another tip i have because of the heat is not to wear fitted stuff when you wear bodysuits and things like that your sweat will just soak up in your shirt like it will you will just look wet <laughs> so i don't recommend wearing fitted clothes in Dubai at all. So next I wanna talk about a really popular topic when it comes to traveling to Dubai, and that is what can I wear? Dubai is an Islamic country, so a lot of people think that you have to wear very conservative clothes. When I went out there, I was filled with anxiety, guys. Like, I was wearing like some biker shorts on the plane, and when I got out there, I was just like almost shaking because I was so scared that somebody's gonna say something to me or give me like a dirty look or be like, oh my God, look at that. I couldn't believe she's showing her legs and I have a big tattoo on my leg. I was just really nervous. In my experience, that is not anything that you really have to worry about. You can truly wear whatever you want in Dubai. I saw crop tops and mini skirts and shorts and V-neck tops and, you know, sleeveless tops and everything under the sun, honestly. The only thing that I didn't see was um, people wearing bikinis on the beach, but I didn't spend a lot of time out on the beach. So I wouldn't say that that's not like a thing that happens. I have seen people wearing bikinis on boats and things like that, but I don't know if that's since that's a more private situation, if that's more acceptable. 
The only place that I found where you had to dress conservative and cover your hair was at the mosque. So I went to Abu Dhabi and we visited the Sheikh Zayed Mosque and there you had to have your arms covered up to your wrist and your legs covered up to your ankles. I even was wearing a traditional abaya but it was cut up here and they made me purchase some extra sleeves to cover up my arms. Of course your hair had to be com not completely covered if you're wearing like I was wearing long braids so my, my hair was coming out the bottom which was fine but you're just kind of the top of your hair had to be covered. Other than that even when I talk to the locals and say, oh, is it okay if I wear this going there? They're like, oh yeah, Dubai is, Dubai is cool. Like, Dubai is chill. You don't have to worry about that. If you wanna go to the bar and the club, do not dress conservative at the bar and the club. They might even have a dress code where women have to wear dresses um, in heels. So just keep that in mind. This isn't really about what you wear, but it is something to expect when you're in Dubai. And because I was so anxious about what I was wearing, it made me feel 10 times worse, but people are gonna stare at you. Especially if you don't look like you belong there, or if you don't look like you're from the Middle East or anything like that, people are gonna stare. They know you're American or a foreigner in general, and there were several occasions, I would say probably more than I can count on my hands, where I caught people staring at me and I would catch them staring and they would not stop staring back at me. <laughs> and it can get really creepy and sometimes people will stare at you for a very, very long periods of time. Like As long as you're there, they will be staring at you. I just want to give you a warning or a heads up because I know it can be disrespectful to stare at people in the US. That's not quite the same standard in Dubai. A lot of people are extremely nice. They just haven't seen someone like you before. So just try not to get too thrown off about it or don't be upset. I like to think of it as something endearing, someone they're excited to look at. It can be awkward, it can be weird, but I promise you, you'll get through it. I remember walking back to my hotel and I looked up and there was a bus full of men on the bus. I don't know where they were going or why it was only men on the bus, but when I tell you, and everyone everyone who was sitting at the window seat was staring at me. Every, every single person, <laughs> verbally out loud, I said, wow, everybody is staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say half of the people stopped looking at me and the other half was still staring. And that was so crazy. And they didn't stop staring until the bus like went on, but that was just so unsettling. But yeah, people are gonna stare at you. So just be prepared. Okay, next I wanna talk about going to the old sucks. If you don't know what a sook is, it's just like a traditional market. You can find all types of stuff, jewelry, bags, clothing, scarves, spices, candies. They have all types of stuff, gold. I just have a couple tips for navigating the sooks when you go because boy, I tell you, it is not for the faint of heart. These Arabian men, they are aggressive. They are aggressive salespeople in Dubai. When I tell you, as soon as we got off the taxi, people were approaching us. And I mean, you could say, no, oh no, I'm not into rap. And they'll keep, they'll keep persisting. Immediately, they're trying to put bracelets on your arms or get you to smell spices or put a scarf and wrap it around your head because that's pretty or get you to try on a abaya. And if you're not interested, I promise the only thing you need to know is to say, no, thank you and keep walking. Do not look too long, blah, blah, blah. Just keep walking, okay? They're strong, like you really have to be strong. Like, oh my gosh, it was so, it was so much. I was physically pulled by people. When I tell you these two men were pulling me so hard, I could have sworn they were like about to kidnap me. Like I didn't think they would because they were, it was so many men and I knew they were probably just selling stuff. But the way they were pulling me, I wouldn't have been surprised if they kept on going down the street and threw me in the car because they were pulling me so hard. And my mom literally, she was up there and she had to run back and come get me for them to let me go because they were trying to wrap this scarf around my head and trying to sell the scarf. I'm like, bro, what is going on? <laughs> but yeah, the six, I would say, even if you're timid and you're shy, I would say still just go to experience it. 
but you don't even have to say anything to them at all. Even if you don't want to say no thank you, just keep walking. If you are interested in something, it can be a little hard because they're gonna like, they're really gonna try and sell you. If you're nervous and you can end up buying something and you don't even want it because that's how hard they come at you as the salesman. So just make sure you kind of have an idea of what you want um, and know what you're shopping for. Another tip that I have is if you see something you like, don't buy it as soon as you see it. Go check out other stalls. A lot of the places in the Sook sell the same exact thing. So um, you can ask the price and then say, okay, I'll come back and then go find the price and somebody may be offering it for half as much. You can bargain it down to get it for the price that you wanna pay. And when you see things, don't show too much interest. Don't say, ooh, oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen because they got you. They're gonna reel you in. They're gonna eat you up. You have to just show minimal interest in the things. Just look at it. Even if it's something like you're like, oh, I absolutely need that. Just look at it like it's, um, oh, it's, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back and then go on about your, your day. Nine times out of 10, if you see something you like, you're gonna run into it two, three, four times again. So don't settle as soon as you see something. A couple tips that I have for bargaining, of course, like I said, don't buy things as soon as you see them. Go check it out, compare the prices to other shops, and then you can use that in your bargaining. You can say, oh, a mom down the way said I can get this for 10 Durham and you're trying to give it to me for 20? Mm -mm. And they'll be like, oh, I can give it to I can give it to you for 10. And then you say, well, I mean, I could go get it for him for 10. So can I get it for six? And then use those kinds of things to help you um, bring the price down. When you start off and you want things, don't buy everything from one shop. You can buy things from one shop and they'll try and give you a good price. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna highball the mess out of what you're trying to buy. I mean, you can have 20 US dollars worth of stuff. They'll say $700. But when I tell you, it'll seem like they're scamming you at first with the prices, but that's just how they roll. They're just trying to get their money. They're just, that's how they make their living. So they have to highball you, then to kind of figure out what kind of shopper you are. So in reverse, I would say you lowball them. If you know that you're willing to pay $50 for the group of things that you got, and they say, oh, I'll sell it to you for 500. You say, why, why are you so expensive? What, like, you, you take me for a fool? <laughs> because clearly, like, they're trying to play with you. But never go above your max. Never say you're willing to pay above your max or your max. Your max needs to be your final offer. And if they can't sell it for you for that price, then don't be afraid to walk away. Sometimes when you walk away, they'll give it to you for that price that you want it for. I would recommend not buying a lot of your products in bulk from one place because then they can be straightforward with you with the price. If you try and go and get two, three or four things or even more, then that's when they start making up those really high prices. If you wanna just buy one keychain from here, you know you only wanna spend $3 on this keychain. It's better that you try and just get the one keychain for $3 instead of getting a keychain and a scarf that you you wanna pay $5 for the scarf and $3 for the keychain. They'll try and get you to buy for 10. And 10 seems like a reasonable price. Right, but you if you went to one shop and got the keychain for three dollars and then one for five dollars, then you'll save money. So I would say split up your purchases, get different things from different shops. Don't just shop all in one place because they'll probably end up highballing you. So some places you cannot bargain at, like obviously you cannot bargain at the mall. So those prices are set in stone, but it's good to go to the places like the mall to kind of see what the price is for certain products, if they would charge two for five for shot glass at the mall, you could probably get two for $2 at the Sooks. Like I would expect things to be cheaper at the Sooks. So go see how much it would cost at a place where you cannot bargain on the price to get a better gauge of how much things are actually worth when you're in Dubai. So since I brought up the mall, I do wanna talk about Dubai Mall. It is extremely big and it's amazing and you absolutely have to go. There are thousands of different stores from low end to high end and overall it's just, 
it's just an amazing experience just walking through the mall and not even shopping at all. Me and my mom spent eight hours in the mall and we still did not see everything that the mall had to offer. And there are amazing things that you can do inside the mall too. I think you can go skiing and um, you can go to the aquarium so it's lots of things to do a tip that i do have if you're going to go to the mall it stays open pretty late i think until midnight i would recommend not staying all the way till the mall is about to close maybe an hour before because the line for a taxi gets extremely long at the end of the night the line was like way long like if we would have stopped to use the bathroom like we would have probably ended up waiting like an hour for a taxi so i definitely recommend trying to not stay too late at the mall because that taxi line gets crazy. And next I just want to talk about more things to do in Dubai, things that I recommend. The first place I want to talk about is the Museum of the Future. I didn't get an opportunity to go. It's one of Dubai's newest activities so it's extremely popular. It was sold out for the entire week that we were there so if you're gonna go you know what date you're traveling. I would say go ahead and book it very far in advance more than two weeks in advance from when you're traveling because it is extremely hard to come past tickets unless maybe someone offers it to you at the last minute but nine times out of ten you're really not going to be able to attend if you don't book it in advance next obviously the big one you absolutely want to do is to go to the burj khalifa we visited floor 146 which was an amazing trip we got it a part of a city tour that we did and it was really nice there gonna offer you packages to visit a higher floor sometimes and we talked to people who went all the way to the highest floor you can go and they said it wasn't a big difference from floor 146 so if you can go on whatever package I would just recommend doing it it's a beautiful view it's extremely nice you can see the entire city up there and it's a 360 view so you can walk around the whole building and you can see old Dubai and just everything so I definitely recommend it Next, I wanna recommend you do any water activity. Dubai has beautiful, beautiful water. I recommend doing a boat charter or jet skiing or anything that you can do just to enjoy Dubai's beautiful water. Another activity that I really wanted to do but I couldn't do because it was booked and sold out was going to Dubai's highest 360 infinity pool and it's called Aura Sky Pool. If you go, Definitely you wanna book it at least a month before you're traveling. If you already know your dates, just go ahead and book it and get it out the way. It's this beautiful rooftop pool. They have food and drinks and it's just so relaxing. It looked beautiful and it had an amazing view and I really wish I was able to go. They have morning tickets, midday tickets and evening tickets for whatever time you wanna go. Another no-brainer must do is to go to the desert when you're in Dubai. So there's lots of activities to do out there. There's ATVing, dune bashing, sand surfing, camel riding. We were able to do it all a part of this one excursion that we booked. It also came with dinner and a show. So if you could find a nice package like that, I would highly recommend it. The only thing I recommend when you're doing those packages, they're usually set for in the afternoon where the sun is getting ready to set so you can have a cooler time at night. And because of that, the sun sets extremely fast when you're out in Dubai. So if you're trying to get some really nice sand pictures, I would recommend as soon as you get to your location at the desert to start taking your pictures because once the sun goes down, it goes down in maybe 15 minutes or so. So go ahead and do your photo shoot and then you can go ahead and enjoy your nighttime in the desert. Another thing that you can do in the desert is a desert photo shoot. It's usually including these beautiful, long, flowy dresses and different colors you can choose from. I didn't do this, but it's something that I wanna do in the future, but it comes with a hefty price tag. They usually range from $350 to $500, depending on the company you go with and how many people you're gonna be doing the photo shoot with. You also have to get up really, really early and go. Usually have to be ready to leave with your transportation around 4 a.m. just so you can be there right as soon as the sun is rising and not when it's at peak heat. They're just trying to help you out. And also just make sure your makeup is really tight. If you're doing your makeup in Dubai, you're gonna be sweating. So make sure it's super sweat proof. I did my makeup when we went to Abu Dhabi and I sweated it all out and it was literally like 
crumbling off my face because I didn't have my sweat proof routine down. So just keep that in mind. Another thing I recommend doing is having dinner with Burj Khalifa views at night. At night it sparkles and they have the Dubai Fountain Show and it's just a beautiful view. So I would highly recommend putting that on your itinerary. All right, I wanna hurry up and wrap this up because I'm running out of sunlight. The sun is setting on me and I need to hurry up, okay? Last, I wanna talk about going to Abu Dhabi. I know it's different Emirate from Dubai, but a lot of people who go to Dubai also visit Abu Dhabi. And I would recommend going to the mosque, Sheikh Zayed Mosque, because it was just amazing. You can go during the day or at night, and it's just equally as beautiful. We went during the day, and honestly, pictures don't do it justice. It's just this amazing mosque. You do not have to wear traditional dress when you go to the mosque. You do just have to be covered up in the standards that they want want you to be but if you do want to get traditional dress you can go to the Sooks to get an abaya. Other things you can do in Abu Dhabi is visit the Louvre Museum. You can also go to amusement parks like Ferrari World and Warner Brothers World. If you're gonna do a guided tour as an excursion I just have a few tips for you. I would recommend just choosing one tour. So we did two tours. We did a city tour and an Abu Dhabi tour and the only thing I didn't like about it was that we were doing some of the same things on the tour. For example, they took us to this Islamic art gallery and at this place they were saying, oh, you can't use your phones. Um, this is some really exclusive art that we're selling you here. You're not gonna be able to find it for a better price. And that just wasn't true. We found some of the same art for a lot cheaper at some of the shops when we went to visit the Sheikh Zayed Mosque. So um, I just found that to be a little scammy, a little gimmicky. We ended up going twice with the city and the Abu Dhabi tour. So once we were seeing them say, oh, how exclusive and how the prices were so good, we were just so over it the second time. We were like, all right, y'all, like we did this already. And also I will only recommend doing half day tours. If you're coming from America, you're most likely gonna be really jet lagged and possibly tired. So doing something for eight hours may just be extremely exhausting. We were over it halfway through the Abu Dhabi tour, which was a full day tour. And it just kind of takes up your day. Like you're already so far and you just want to get back to your hotel and chill out and do whatever you want to do. So I recommend the half days. But yeah, that's all I have to talk about today. If you guys like this video or found anything helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or want me to touch on any different topics, leave a comment. I'm happy to respond to every single one of you guys. And if you like travel, beauty and lifestyle content, and please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you a part of the Sierra Leone family. But yes, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly do appreciate it. And if you're traveling to Dubai, I hope you have safe travels and you have a wonderful time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.